Hi everybody, Carol here. Today I'm going to be making a card called the Impossible Card. And it is not impossible. In fact, it's very easy. But it's kind of an optical illusion, so it gives the appearance that it's uh, impossible or very difficult to make. So I'll tell you more later how I found this and give some credit to some people. But right now I want to show you how this works. I am making a 5x7 card. So uh, I'm folding the, I'm not really folding, I'm showing you um, just a template here of how it could work. But um, the card goes in half landscape style. And then the uh, one flap is cut in half, or there's a slash, it's not cut in half, excuse me, but there's a slash at the halfway mark, which in my case is three and a half from seven. Uh, the fold, of course, there is at two and a half because it's five by seven. And then on the other flap, it's, um, you can kind of do what you want to. I chose to come in one and three fourths inch from either end and make a slash to the middle. Now you can see what happens here. You have these loosey goosey flaps there and it's very amazing to me how that works. You turn that bottom flap, the bigger one, you can do either one actually, but I put my thumb on the bigger flap and my index finger on kind of the, uh, the higher flap and you just f literally twist it under. You just flip it. And when you get through and put it down, then the center of the uh, side that has the two slashes, it uh, is just there. It can come up or go down or whatever, and there it is. And you uh, fold it. You can do it on your scoreboard if you want to, and you kind of burnish that fold right there. And so it stands up, and you think, how in the world can this be one piece of paper? Um, you, it's you kind of think, did somebody glue that in? Or is it glued between another sheet of paper underneath or what? But it is simply because of the way it's twisted. So I'm turning it all around so you can see it from all angles. And uh, that doesn't really help you figure it out very well. But now watch. When I put it back to where it was, the big half rectangle back down to the bottom in the skinny I'm almost, almost going to call it a leg, goes back up to the top, and then you can see where that middle piece fits right back. It is totally a flat sheet of paper. But flip it under and forward, backwards and forward, and uh, and that's it. And there is just so much can be done. Originally, uh, I think this was done, the first video that I saw was in 2012, and someone did it with a playing card from a deck of cards. And it looked really good with the cards number, you know, on one side, like the seven of hearts, and then the uh, outside, uh, maybe bicycle. On the other side, it was very interesting. Now, this is really the way I chose to do it. Rather than do the measurement, I put it on my scoreboard. It's five by seven. I put the seven down long. And I don't want to score all the way across. I'm going to the three and a half, I mean, excuse me, the two and a half mark because that's a five inch, that's the five inch side. But I don't want, I just want to score in the middle. So I'm just, I'm, I'm getting in the groove of the two and a half, but I'm kind of guesstimating there uh, where the, uh, what I would call the legs are and, and skipping those. Okay, now with my trimmer, I'm just mark, I'm just cutting the three and a half mark and then I'm going back and cutting the one and three fourths legs as I call them. Flip it over and get the other one and three fourths and again I think you could make this any size you wanted. That's just what I chose to use. Now my trimmer I can't see where that line is so I'm going to have to go back with my scissors and just do a little bit of clipping uh, till I get to that um, middle line. You can tell where it is. And, of course, you can do it the good old tried and true way with a ruler and pencil and make marks and draw that off. Um, I'm usually trying to find a faster, easier way. But here, again, if, uh, if you want to do it this way, it, it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, draw your lines and find your halfway mark and then whatever you want for the end. Um, you know, you can do that. Absolutely no question. And then I also came up with a third way that I really like better than the other two. 
but I, I didn't put it in this video but if I do some more of these I'll show you that other way I I think it is uh, even faster than these I like it better so um, now to decorate that's what happened this uh, originally just started out as like a paper trick I think but uh, someone cleverly thought of turning this into a card and um, I first first one I saw was May May made it and then after that I saw some others and um, so I would you know encourage you to look them up they're good um, and mine is slightly different um, that's just because we're all different so I ran this through uh, memory we are memory keeper mem memory keeper um, embossing folder on my uh, die cut machine there and I wanted a what I call a sun sunburst this is I think this uh, embossing folder is called stripes but I uh, always look at this as a, a sunburst and so I used a stencil brush and just got a bunch of different colors of ink pads that are yellows and golds and orange all the way up to red and I'm really really fast forwarding through this and uh, then I got my makeup sponge to darken it up a little bit uh, pulled out even another ink pad that had a different shade this was um, I don't marigold or something and uh, just trying uh, and that's was kind of a blob but I got to go back and uh, work with it and ended up cutting some of that top part off anyway so this is going to go on that piece of paper that or actually in this case cardstock that sticks up in the middle and you will see that in a minute so I'm also showing that one of the things that I do if you've seen any of my videos I love to go around with a neutral color ink and outline all the edges of all my pieces all of those that are sitting there I did that I think it frames them then I got a brand new bottle of my Tombow mono multi glue it's repositionable I just think it is the best glue and that repositional part comes in handy when you do something like this you just have to let it dry for however long it takes it goes from being white to being clear and um, then you can pull all these pieces of paper up but here I am assembling it I decided to go with the kind of the colors of the sunburst and um, I just cut those rectangles just slightly smaller than the ones that were already there it was nothing um, hard about it at all and it didn't have to be exact now there's my sunburst I had stamped these little girls with flowers cut out around them just roughly and then I went back and um, colored in the inside or the white space is there to match the background so it will look as if I went in there and cut out <laughs> intricately all of that those around those little flowers and everything no way but um, anyway just to try to make it look more realistic I will show you that little stamp set in a minute it is stamping up and I have another stamping up stamp and um, so they are probably retired I don't even know how you could find them um, but maybe if you could get in contact with the dealer they could help you now here's where I differ a little bit from what I've seen so far uh, most everybody well, I haven't seen that many but the ones I've seen have this uh, bar across that open space to keep it steady and stable and uh, measuring on something like this grid helps you to keep those lines straight and then um, there is a little saying there that goes with this stamp set it's um, where where flowers grow there's hope or something like that then I also put a little uh, thinking of you uh, stamp sentiment on that other uh, opening but you'll see later I decided to to not do that but anyway so here's the stamp set these flowers and then a punch again these are stamping up I've had for a long long time I'm not a dealer never have been but um, I stamped them first and then punched them out stamped them in red ink and then went back and colored with yellow and orange the one at the top right was just stamped out and now it's on the left uh, side uh, it's just cut out of cardstock just to show you the difference now this fits perfectly in a um, five by seven envelope so I uh, just fold it up slide it in there and then there is um, the um, the other stamp that I was going to show you the little girls it's called thankful thoughts 
So in the other stamp set is called looks like spring, I think. So what I decided was I don't think I need that bar across there. Uh, I moved, I moved it over and put it on the left hand side and then trimmed it off, moved the sentiment over just a little bit, moved the flowers over and um, it is so stable and so steady but I have at least two layers of cardstock and in some cases more than that. I also, you might notice, I also put a piece of white paper on the back of that sunburst. It just made it look neater from the back side. But I'm just showing you the difference. This uh, copy paper, see how flimsy it is? And it, it doesn't hold its shape. It does move around, but that cardstock is pretty solid. So I just didn't think I needed the bar, and I'm thinking that it looks more mysterious this way. It's like, okay, how did that happen with these big gaps there, and how is that standing up and everything else? Okay, so then one more change I made. I, I left those sun rays out because there's room on the side to have something sticking out, but the top didn't look right to me. So I went back and just drew a line a fourth of an inch down, or maybe it was an eighth of an inch, and cut those other sun rays out just slightly, just to give it a, a more realistic look than, than what it was, in my opinion. So um, there you have it. The white back of the sunburst, which gave it a lot neater look than it was before. Um, the little sentiment there, the flower cut out of cardstock, the flower cut out of uh, what was already printed with the stamp set, the girls in front of the sun, all of the above. And then when you push it all the way back, it fits into an envelope. But I thought, you know what, I want to be able, another reason, I didn't want that bar across there. Now I might make another card with the bar, but the one reason I didn't want it is because you can twist that back down again and send that, for example, right there. I twisted it back down and I could just see my grandson going, okay, I want to see how this works. Or, you know, any kid, you know, might want to figure out how to get that to work. Now I'm just going back and showing some old pictures of the original, how I had it, but this is how it is now. And he could figure out how to flip that down or flip it back. And, um, inquisitive minds and all that. So I hope you enjoyed. I know it's a long video and I've been talking fast to tr and I really sped all this up so that it wouldn't be so long, but uh, I hope you'll give it a try. It is so much fun and I will put um, some of those other names down in the suggestion box. I mean not suggestion, <laughs> the description box and stay tuned. There's some other videos you might want to see. Bye bye for now.